Now this part of the question, what we've got to do is find this area R bounded by the line x equals 4, the x-axis and the curve C which is given by the parametric equation up here. We've actually got to show that the area R is equal to 64 times the integral from pi to th upon 3 to pi upon 2 of sine squared t cos t dt. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, the area, okay, bounded by the curve and the x-axis is always going to given by the integral of y with respect to x, with x going from naught, the lower boundary, to the upper value here, 4. So that's the area, basically, r. Now, what we need to do is to modify this to get it to look like this. Now first of all, we'll forget about the limits just for a moment, okay, so we have the integral. Now y, we substitute as 4 sine 2t in, so we do that, 4 sine 2t. Now to get dx, what we need to do is change this to the variable dt. So we have dx, we introduce dt, and it's as if we take it out here. Okay? Now, we are integrating now with respect to t, and what we need to do is change these limits. These limits before were with respect to x, so we need to change them with respect to t. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, for the lower limit, that's when x is naught. What we need to do is go up to here and put x equals naught. So what I'm going to say over here, okay, is that when x equals naught, we would have naught equals 8 cos t. And if that's the case, dividing both sides by 8 gives that cos t is equal to 0. And that means that t is the inverse cos of 0, and that is pi upon 2 radians. So, I can put the pi upon 2 down as the lower limit. And you might look at this and think, that's a bit odd, I've got pi upon 3 as the lower limit, and the pi upon 2 is the upper limit. Well, there's a little trick at the end that we perform. So just bear with me at the moment. We put the pi upon 2 there. Now we take the upper limit, and this is when x is 4. And that's the, we're looking for the value of t when x was 4. And you may remember from the earlier part of this question, we found that at that point t was pi upon 3. So just going to put pi upon 3 there. Now we need to work out what dx by dt is, so that we can substitute this in here. So we just put equals the integral from pi upon 2 to pi upon 3. We'll put the 4 sine 2t in. Now, dx by dt, what was that? Well, if you differentiate 8 cos t with respect to x, you're going to get minus 8 sine t. So I'll put that in there as minus 8 sine t, and then we have the dt on the end. Okay, all we need to do now is just clean this up. So we'll come down here, and we've got the area r. In fact, I'll just cut that off there. We've got the area r is equal to, well, 4 times minus 8 is minus 32. So we've got minus 32, which I'm going to put outside the integral, going from pi upon 2 to pi upon 3. And then we have sine 2t. Now, sine 2t, you should know the, that your double angle formula. Sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. So in this case, the a is the t value. So we have 2 sine t, just pop that in there, 2 sine t cos t. And then we have this extra sine t on the end. So that's going to be multiplied 
with this sine t, so we now have sine squared t dt. Now we're getting fairly close to the answer as you can see. If I take the 2 out we would get minus 64. Minus 64 times the integral from pi upon 2 to pi upon 3 of sine squared t cos t with respect to t. Now at this stage you might think oops I've gone wrong because you've got basically this answer it seems only you've got the negative sign here and your limits around the wrong way. Well what you can do is a well-known fact that if you uh, switch limits then you change the sign of your integral. So this is exactly the same then as 64 times the integral from pi upon 3 to pi upon 2 sine squared t cos t dt. And that's what we had to show. And so hopefully you've been able to follow that and that brings us nicely to the end of this part of the question.